term that is used as uh, a sequelae of uh, an outcome of a heart disease. I mean, uh, let me clarify right at the beginning that heart failure itself is not a, 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 a disease. It's, it's basically a sequelae of different heart diseases. Okay, so in the heart, you can have a valvular heart disease, you can have a, a coronary artery disease, where, which is very common. We call it as uh, blockages in the arteries of the heart or it can be a disease of the muscles of the heart okay so one of the commonest uh, uh, disease uh, that affects uh, uh, the society is what is called as coronary artery disease or also called as ischemic heart disease in coronary heart disease or ischemic heart disease you get blockages in the arteries that supply the muscles of the heart and when you get these blockages uh, different uh, patients present in a different way. Some present very dramatically like with a heart attack. Some have what is called a stable angina where they walk for a distance they get angina. Okay, some present with unstable angina where they have repeated admissions with uh, chest pain. Now, when a treatment that is prescribed for these patients are not taken at the right time. For example, if a patient has a heart attack, okay, and uh, heart attack patient generally comes to the hospital and we try to treat them within the first few hours, say within the first three hours or for a maximum of six hours, which is called the golden period. And when we treat these patients, the heart muscles, which was not receiving the blood supply, when we restore them, the heart muscles improve and come back to normal. However, if we miss the golden period, the heart pumping goes down, right? So when the heart pumping goes down and that may not improve uh, in the near future or it may never improve, these are the patients that eventually go into heart failure. So coming back to your question, what is heart failure? Heart failure in simple language is the pumping of the heart. There is a, there is a pump called as the left ventricle in, in the heart. This left ventricle when the pump goes down beyond the normal capacity, below the normal capacity, it starts misbehaving and uh, uh, it, it does not commensurate with the needs of one's body. So when a person starts walking or starts doing activity, he or she starts feeling breathless. Why do they feel breathless? Because heart is not able to commensurate with the needs of the person. Say a person has to walk half a kilometer, right? So when a person has to walk half a kilometer, heart has to take that load, it has to pump more, heartbeat has to go up, but when the heart pump is low, it is not able to do that. So there will be a backward pressure onto the lungs and the patient starts complaining of breathlessness. So this is what grossly a heart failure means. So heart failure is basically a sequelae of various heart diseases if not treated on time. So as I told you, heart failure is a sequelae of uh, heart disease and one of the commonest uh, uh, cause of heart failure is uh, a heart attack not taken treatment on time. So this basically translates to a, uh, to a situation where the heart attack burden is going high, right? And heart attack is an outcome of coronary artery disease. Now coronary artery disease, as I told you, is the blockages in the arteries of the heart, right? Now blockages in the arteries of the heart have got risk factors. The, the commonest risk factor is uh, 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 smoking, high cholesterol, strong family history of heart disease, the aging process itself, right, and uh, uh, the stress. In associated with uh, additional uh, risk factors like hypertension and diabetes. So if you see over last uh, uh, two to three decades, uh, more and more youngsters are getting uh, uh, heart attacks. The reason for that is the lifestyle. The, the lifestyle has become uh, quite uh, uh, difficult for youngsters. Uh, there has been uh, a lot of uh, uh, adoption of Western lifestyle now, in which uh, uh, the, 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 the work hours are very long in, in, in day to day life. There, there are night shifts, which was not a, a part of uh, life, uh, say, three decades back. The work hours in the office, this also leads to increase uh, consumption of calories, it leads to obesity. It also, uh, people have taken up to smoking, I mean in 1970s, 80s, in India there used to be a lot of smoking, the smoking rates dip, and again the smoking has gone up, and this also leads to obesity. This in turn brings about uh, diabetes and early hypertension, and uh, uh, as I told you, the, these all contribute to heart attacks. 
So we, we did a study over last, uh, from 2009 to 2019 and we saw there has been a 200 fold uh, increase in the number of uh, heart attacks and diabetes that come to our hospital. So this is one of the reasons that, uh, uh, that leads to increase in the burden of uh, coronary artery disease which in turn leads to uh, heart failure. Hence, uh, uh, if you see now, almost 25% of uh, the heart failure burden is amongst uh, people who are less than 50 years of age. So, uh, let me break this question into uh, two or three parts. You are talking about economics and heart failure. Right. I mean, getting a heart failure is an economic burden not only to the patient but also to the state. How, how do I, uh, how, let me elaborate on this. If a person does not take treatment at the right time, right, they go into heart failure. And when they have heart failure, they can have repeated hospital admissions, if not uh, uh, just an outpatient uh, visit. Those patients who have frequent uh, hospitalizations uh, and eventually uh, they end up having uh, a more specialized treatments like heart failure or LVADs, LVADs are special devices. Which, which are like artificial heart, all this adds up to the cost. Now, uh, if, if you see, uh, we, we are a country where people paying out of pocket is still uh, a big chunk of uh, uh, patients who do uh, have to shell out the money out of pocket. Insurance penetration is hardly 20-25% and in some bigger places, bigger cities, it's almost going up to 40%. But more than 50% of the patients uh, still insurance does not cover uh, their, their health expenses. So heart disease, heart disease especially the heart failure, the, the medication, not only the medications are expensive, they are, have to be lifelong medications and it can also entail admissions repeatedly. So uh, a combination of, of all these things uh, can make it a very expensive affair for the patient. Now, as I told you, 25% of uh, patients who are having uh, heart failure are, are, are actually younger patients who are like uh, below 50 years of age. So before below 50 years of age means these are the patients who end up eventually having a lot of absenteeism from their work. They will not be going to their offices, their, their workplace to do work because of uh, the disease. What it translates into, it translates into it is data which says that it translates into 9 million uh, days of uh, loss of work in our country. Okay, And going forward it is going to be almost 18 million years of loss of work when you cumulatively put all these things uh, uh, in, in an economic perspective which translates into a loss of almost 250 billion dollars per year. Right. So this is uh, more than GDP of many countries. So that is the economic burden that a country can uh, face. It's like simply put, if, if I remove a population uh, uh, of a working uh, uh, age group and will not allow them to work because of health reason, obviously it will translate to an economic loss to the country. I mean productivity. Okay, so not all patients of heart failure require hospitalization. Uh, as I told you, uh, in heart failure, the left ventricle pumping goes down. So we, we categorize it as pumping which is like mildly reduced, moderately reduced and severely depressed uh, left ventricular functioning. So mild and moderately uh, reduced heart functioning, these patients are, are basically managed in the outpatient department with anti-heart failure medication. In last few years, uh, there are a lot of medications that have come for heart failure. There have a lot of been advances in the treatment of heart failure. One such medicine is a combination of sacrobitral, valsartan combination, which is now easily available in the country. So that, that was a very expensive drug in the past. Now, uh, with, uh, now the Indian companies are able to come up with this drug. And similarly, some more drugs are coming, which actually has uh, benefited the population at large. Now, there is other chunk of patients whose uh, left ventricle function is severely depressed. Now these patients, they may not optimally respond to the medications. In addition to the medications, uh, we additionally uh, give them certain lifestyle changes like ask them to reduce weight, 
they will have to take uh, a measured amount of fluids per day so that uh, otherwise the, the heart will not be able to take that load of fluid that they take. We ask them to measure their body weight every day because uh, a slight increase in body weight of 1, 1 and a half, 2 kgs in, in few days means body is retaining fluid. So when these things are, are, uh, are a way to monitor them, but eventually uh, some patients, uh, the, the medicines won't work, they won't work optimally or patients will not show that discipline, they end up in the hospital. Now, if they end up in the hospital, sometimes the hospitalizations can, can, uh, can be prolonged or it can be frequent. Okay, there is, there is uh, a prognostication also when heart failure patients uh, get admitted more than four to five times in a year, their outcomes, their five years mortality is, is, is quite uh, bad. I mean, uh, only 25% of the patients go on to survive beyond four to five years. On the other hand, frequent hospitalizations of these patients is quite frustrating for the patients. I mean, a patient get, comes into the hospital, you optimize the treatment, they start feeling good, you say, okay, you go home now, and sometimes they come back in the uh, next few days, and sometimes they come back in 48 hours, sometimes they come back in 2-3 months. So, it's very difficult, sometimes it's very difficult to predict who will come quickly and who, who, who can stay at home for long. And as I told you, the severely depressed uh, left ventricular heart function patients who keep on requiring frequent hospitalizations might require one step ahead and there are other, other forms of treatments in these patients. Some, we can address them by putting in certain types of pacemakers called as biventricular pacemakers in these patients or, or, or what is called as CRTP where uh, these pacemakers actually synchronize both the right ventricle and left ventricle and it increases the pumping by 5 to 10 percent. Similarly, some of these uh, low heart failure, uh, low pumping patients, uh, they have, they, their hearts are very irritable and they throw life-threatening arrhythmias in which we implant what is called as uh, AICDs or automated implantable cardiac defibrillators. Now, cardiac defibrillators are, are actually the machines that you see in the airports or in, in public areas in one corner uh, in one corner where we take out and actually defibrillate a person who who has a sudden cardiac event or sudden cardiac death these are actually inbuilt uh, devices which look like pacemaker and we put it below the left collarbone so this is another type of treatment that uh, is used for these heart failure patients uh, what about the heart transplant now eventually when none of these work uh, the medicines don't work uh, the crtp pacemakers they don't work uh, uh, a subset of patients, uh, we work them up for what is called as heart transplant, which is which is actually can, uh, catching the fancy of a uh, lot of uh, uh, hospitals now because a uh, lot of hospitals are taking this initiative and we being uh, one of the hospitals in Mumbai, we have taken initiative of doing heart transplant and our, our, our cardiac surgery team has uh, received a license to do a heart transplant uh, at our hospital. What does it involve? It involves actually uh, uh, end stage heart failure patients as I told you who has a prolonged hospitalization and now they are not even able to go back to their homes they, they qualify for urgent uh, heart transplants and people who, who can go home and can come back they are listed in non-urgent heart transplants so, so these hearts are actually obtained from patients who are brain dead who have met with accidents uh, either an unnatural or natural cause of death where they, they are screened for a matching of the heart and they, they, are, they, are, they are brought to the uh, hospital and a heart transplant is done. Beyond a particular age where patients are not fit for heart transplant, we have this uh, artificial heart called as left ventricular assist device, which is actually implanted uh, uh, within the patient's abdomen and that actually works as a pump for the failed left ventricle. It actually takes the blood from the left ventricle and puts it in the iota. So, so that can be charged by the patients uh, every day and that can go on for years. Uh, this is nothing but an artificial heart. So this is broadly the treatment of heart failure.